in this season. The vessels that you have chosen that will host the fire of the Holy Ghost beyond talk. The vessels that you have chosen over the land of the south do not allow this season to pass them. Every vessel, those watching us online, every vessel that the Lord has willed to put his spirit. Sia benda la cabrosca tende, varitos carias, esco paracatua, e a be paradia com my skin. Thank God, thank God. in the name of Jesus we thank you this day again do a quick work do a quick work do a quick work invade this land Lord invade our hearts Lord invade us Lord don't allow this to be another service Lord Show us what true Christianity really is. Call us to yourself. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. I ask once more that you may flow through us, that your truth will be made known, and that this land, Lord, will be earmarked for the next revival that is yet to strike the continent of Africa. Do a quick work. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people say it. Can we bless the Lord for today as you have your seat? God is good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just maintain that. Help me. Just little strings. What you are playing. We are here. I'm here basically on the. Under the knowledge of my father in the Lord. Apostle Arome Osai. I thank God for him. I told you my little story. I don't know if it is here. I said it, but uh, when I was coming to South Africa, I was not coming. I had an invitation prior to him. So I was now supposed to come to the nation of South Africa. There was an organized meeting. And in that very note, a night prior to that, I, I don't know if I was sleeping, I would be lying, or I, it was a dream or a vision. What I know is that I saw. That's all I can say. You know, once you become mature, mature, when you're holding this thing, there's a lot of lying going on in the pulpit. People claiming they see, they don't see anything. You have a lot of people that say, Jesus sent me. Jesus did not send you. And you see, the problem of the church, you have been taught to accommodate everything. That's the first mistake we did. According to Paul, his perspective of ministry, he says that you must design the spirit. That's Paul's perspective of what made him to always subdue and always be on top of Satan's radar. So the fact that you carry title, it does not mean, oh, you want, we want to go to deep scripture. Don't worry, we'll be going there shortly. The Bible calls them false prophets. Do you realize the name prophet was not taken away? Okay, let me stop that. Do you realize... The only thing that was added to their prophecy, prophetic is another title called false, but they are still prophets. So the fact that we carry titles of prophets, pastors, that doesn't mean anything in the realm of the spirit. What matters is do we have the mark of the spirit of God? That's what substitutes God's men and other men. And in this season, what God is going to do in the nation of South Africa, before we came here, we took a long prayer for this land. And we know... 
the kind of men that are trying to toil, claiming that Jesus sent them and he didn't send them. And we know the ones that Jesus sent. Yes. And the problem with us as human beings, especially this young generation, we go where it's trending, not where it's godly. We invite someone based on what the numbers they can pull, not the service they can deliver. So our perspective shifted. And can I tell you, you know this hyper grace perspective has been taught the wrong way. Jesus coming for you is him in credit. You will need to follow that life for you to be added as a son. So what God did in Christ, he handed you Jesus to show you the walk, not to walk for you. So we teach that the sacrifice of redemption was only on Christ. Are you aware that when he was dying, you were part of the people that were dying? Are you aware you were called into his death? It means fornication must die, adultery must die. All those things that Jesus did not do, they must die. And you cannot stand in the name of Jesus to substitute other demons. Can't work. So what God did, he gave you Jesus to teach you the work so that you too can offer your lives, offer your bodies, offer your... Jesus already offered his, but you will need to offer yours if you are to stay in the lane where Jesus called you. So I now came, and when I realized that my father was coming to the land, I called the people that had invited me, and I turned down my invitation. I told them a greater senior is... In, at hand. I'm not seeing a reason for coming to South Africa. And because of that, that the next morning I was teaching in my church. My church is in Kenya. And when I finished, the Lord whispered to me. He says, in blessings, I'll bless you. I didn't understand. So the next day, I never knew how to come to South Africa. And for me, I travel in many parts of the world by the grace of God. I never asked people to wait for me. So I came to South Africa, booked an aeroplane. My wife told me, you have started again. So when I got to the, to the airport, I looked. I said, Jesus, I'm here. My father and the Lord did not know I was coming. Because God told me, in that vision, I saw me serving, not preaching. So I now left my nation, not to come and preach. I left my nation to come and serve South Africa, to serve. I did not care whether they would ever know me or the sacrifice that I made. I would never care. What I wanted is that when that move of revival begins... I want my name to be engraved as part of the man that steered the move of the Holy Spirit. And whether I steered it as washing toilet, it wouldn't matter to me. I, I just want my name to be somewhere that John C.W. washed toilet during that revival hub. We are good. Because we know another reward system that comes from heaven. And can I tell you, on earth, you might be highly esteemed. But in the corridors of heaven, the person that makes heaven move is in the dungeons. When that person begins to pray, heaven begins to hear. God does not go with fame. God goes with sincerity of heart. And if he looks at sincerity of heart and he doesn't see you, he will find it. Any person that even if you don't know them and don't celebrate them, God will find that heart. And that is the person God will wait. And when they begin to pray, heaven will open. And that ladder will be because that man stood for South Africa. So when we now came, I finished my everything, entered the airport, and I now looked and I told God, God, I don't even know anyone here. I'm here. Then I now checked. His airplane was coming two hours later. I sat. Sat at the airport. Security came. I don't know what is it with South Africa. They really check a lot of people seated at the airport. She so said, are you waiting for someone? I say, yeah. He went. 15 minutes later, are you waiting? I say, yes. The other time, they now asked me for passport. I say, if you knew what we came to do in this land. <laughs> but because the eye of man sees carnally, but the eyes of God sees the heart. Finally, he now came. He was shocked. He now said, C.W., why did you come? I say, I came to serve. I came to serve. I didn't come to be known. And it is amazing how people that hide, God exposes them. When you expose yourself, God will make sure you are hidden. You, no man, not even your own mother will know you. Your anointing will not be known in your own family. Yes. Leave that Facebook thing alone. Go to closet. 
Yes, God only exposes hidden men. Remember that. And I've realized this thing all over my life in ministry. Anytime God exposes a man, be careful to know that that man is first hidden. You don't need to look for likes and look for followers. Look for Jesus. When Jesus say, it is you. It is you, my brother. It is you. You will need to know my story because I don't have time. I need to teach. I hear you call in your nation taxi. Taxi is a very good name. In our land, taxi is Uber. You see this public transport? We call it Matatu. That's, I was a driver. At 14, I was a driver. There is no man that could have made me stand here apart from Jesus. No man. Yes, I'm not the kind that comes from a family where men are known. I'm the kind that comes from a family if you want to make it, it is the hand of the Lord. And Jesus began showing me. And at a young age, he used to tell me words like, do not go the way of the dogs. I didn't understand it. I thought it was an abuse. Then I came to realize, because now I have dogs, that a dog will eat and spit and eat and spit. <clears throat> and the Lord told me those what you call unstable Christians. Holy and holy. Holy and holy. Righteous and righteous. They, they never really stand for God. It is God or nothing. That's what God always used to whisper to my ear. Don't go the way of the dogs. It is when I now got a dog that I now realize it's so it cheats its stomach that it has eaten by vomiting and eating. <laughs> Let me leave that much. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, there is a lot for you to eat. Stop pretending you are eating. Eat the word of God. Eat. Yes, eat every day. Pray. Stop counting on yesterday's prayer. Pray again. In Jesus' mighty name. We began a, a little teaching yesterday. And I thank God for the man of God that gave us this opportunity. And today we want to touch base on that very one. By the grace of God in Jesus' name. I want you to open with me the book of Luke 7. Thank you very much, sir. Please continue. Luke 7. Let's begin from verse 25. Luke 7 verse 25. Apostle Aaron Meosai will be here in the evening. For miracle service, he requested that you give him an opportunity to pray. Not to rest. To pray. The man is a giant. I've been with him. I can tell you his secret life. That man prays for 24 hours. You try to give him water. He, he'll give you verses. You try to give him bread. Guess the verse. I, I, I have found the bread of life. It's hard to serve him. So you just said, Jesus, you serve him by yourself. By the time you want to give him water, he said, mm, I hunger and thirst after righteousness. How do you serve such a man? The only thing we just do is to open the door and say, is he alive? He said, okay. Jesus, you will need angels to administer to this human. We, he's beyond. We, <laughs> so he will be here in the evening by the grace of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Luke 7, verse 25. Kindly can we read? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are the kings, are in the king's court. But what went ye out to see? So the conversation here is perception. So here we have people that came to see. But tell your neighbor, neighbor, your sight is your problem. It's, it's you. You are the one that knows what you came to see. So among all of us here, we will be foolish to think that all of us are seeing the same thing. So he now says, but what he went out to see, the first one was who? Notice the kind of, the list. Go to verse 25. Look at the list on verse 25. What did you go out to see? A man. So the verse 25 begins to bring the elaboration of what? A man clothed with soft raiment. 
This is our perception in our generation of a man of God. The appearance matters to us. So, <laughs> any man can appear in that concept. So if your sight is limited to that first realm, tell your neighbor, neighbor, you are, you are not a candidate of the Holy Ghost. If, if this is your realm of God, you are still limited. You will now need to go to verse 26. Go to verse 26. He now goes to the second rank. He says, what did you come to see? A prophet? Yeah, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. So whatever this person, who, uh, who, who are we talking about here? Who is the person in conversation? Huh? Good. So when you call John a prophet, you are still undermining his grace. Because according to Jesus, he said, if you came to see a man, John did not have that ability. John did not have raiment. John did not have a menu. John was not even living in a king's court. So it means that generation, that generation's men of God, these were the kind of things they sought for as proof of anointing. Then he now goes to verse 26 and he says, if you have come again to seek for a prophet, he begins to tell you, this person called John is beyond it. So even if you look at John from a prophetic view, you will still be lacking something in his oil. Go to verse 27. This is he. Can we, can we read there kindly? This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face. Which shall prepare thy way. Now wait. Uh, wait, it is written there. I send my do you remember the first the prayer verse he says, if you're looking for a prophet, he is more than a prophet. So according to heaven, heaven looks at John as what? The word is right there. <laughs> he says, he's a messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So John is a messenger. And can I explain to you, the reason why you talk about a messenger, let me explain it. Can I, can I use someone? Uh, no, 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 please, sir. No, no. Please come, brother. Come, whoever, just come. Let me explain to you. Come. This is a messenger. Look at this. This is a pen. I need you to take that pen to the overseer of the Western Cape, right? Now, look. Take the pen. What has he done? What has he done? Now, I need you to understand it. Prophet, come. Take back the pen. Take back the pen and come. Take the pen. Thank you, sir. Come. I will hand you this pen. In your prophetic grace, you have two options. Option one is to hear me, but you need to understand you have another ability inside you to follow your gift. I need to show you some of the things that happened in the Bible that God did not have anything to do with it. But because of the grace upon that prophet, it had to happen because of the decree of the prophet. Do you remember when Elisha called in animals to devour some children? Huh? Do you remember? Are you aware that that is not the part that God's will was involved in? But it was his will as a prophet has authority because the spirit of a prophet is subject. He can subject that spirit to bring about the kind of result that God is not involved in. So we have a lot of people that were anointed genuinely. They began well. But along the line, they began bringing out oozing things that Jesus was not part of them. That's what I'm talking about. So the reason why God did not bring John just as a prophet, but as a messenger, is because there was a message that was put in his heart. He is not allowed to edit any part of that message. It's supposed to go as raw as it came. So as a prophet, he can begin to go and in the company, someone can meet him and begin to say, do you know what your gift can do? Do you know how rich you can become? Do you know you can, you, you, you can begin to see and then that person can give you a Bentley 
because of the gift. Jesus already told you, as he told the disciples, when you go on your journey, take nothing. There's already a clear guideline on that kind of a journey. Take nothing with you. You now need to be very committed to that word because you can now get on the road and realize, wow, there is a microphone. Jesus told you, take nothing. But you will now need, because you have still a gift that is not governed fully by the Holy Ghost. That's why I advise you, before you call yourself a title, find Jesus. Let Jesus subdue the gift. Be under the rule of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you will be truly prophesying and you are seeing, but for your own gain. Your own gain. And this is what happened to the land of South Africa. A lot of men cheated God along the process. So God invested oil. True to it, God gave them. But because the gift of God are without repentance. Along the line, they found avenues to succeed without God. To do ministry without God. So the things that fathers like this value, holiness, righteousness, are no longer the cord that the young preacher is rising the generation with. The conversation now is suit and tie and attire and blue, blue clouds and screen and what. And those things are not the proof that our ministry is anointed. Yes. So if you ask a father like this in his days, a man having one wife was a strong thing in our days. It is a church having a big auditorium. So the anointing shifted from lifestyle to view. What do you see? And Satan knew that he can capitalize on that. So guess what he did? He knew that the problem of our generation is sight. So he packaged his own and he put them on the altar. And because we do not have a generation of people that can decode those that were sent by Jesus, Paul says, design the spirit. So now today, people just, anyone can access theology, Bible school. You'll be foolish to think that everyone in a Bible school has God in, in heart. Anyone can access it. So because of the prophetic gift in him, Satan can begin to talk to him. And he can begin to tell him, look at the, ah, how do you go like that? On the way, prophesying to him, you see this one has a problem. Jesus already told you, in this journey, you will only need to prophesy to one man. Only one. But along the way, ten came. Nine were distraction. According to heaven, heaven is not aware of the nine. So anything that, even if the gift will thrive, it is not on godly ground. Yes. So it is only the gift. And, 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 and mind you, the man will be seen. He'll be seen. But along the line, he'll be negotiating with Satan. So by the time he reaches, what was an intention? The only Lord. Ooh, do you understand what I'm selling you? The only load that God expected this man to carry was what? By the time he reaches to our father here, allow me please. By the time he reaches to deliver, look what he's delivering to the generation to come. And because that generation needs to know God through him, that generation will now take loads that Jesus Christ did not introduce before. So now he will deliver that his will and God's will will be mixed. So you will now have two wills. The will of man and the will of God. And you, oh, my people, this is what happened to the land of the south. They became mixture. And anytime there is mixture, the spirit of God will be lifted. Mixture appeared. We forced oil and water. But can I tell you the good thing about mixture? A time will come. No matter how much you shake those two ingredients, when you leave it to rest, a time will come. It will, the clear guideline will show. This is the time that a clear guideline will be seen. Between those that are for Jesus and those that are not, there is a clear guideline. No matter how much you try to mix the two of them, mm. There are people that God has set out to do his will. And they know what is water and they know what is oil. And they will not negotiate water for oil. It is either water or oil. So by the time this thing reaches this generation, thank you, sir. He will now hand something that, according to Jesus, the only thing Jesus expects him to hand, hand what Jesus told you. But because 
He has his own will. He was not a messenger. He handed that generation more than what Jesus told him. So that generation has three items to work with. And two items of that, four items, three, one, two, three, two of those will be belonging to Satan. So anytime Satan wants to come and charge that generation, he has legal ground to exercise his agenda because there is an open gate. Man became a gate to Satan. I pray that I'm talking to all of you. I will not be foolish to think I am. Maybe. So in this generation, if we want to save our generation, we must first begin by calling evil, evil. Yes, that's how it begins. We must begin by setting things straight. Going back to where we lost it. Where did we lose it? God is not interested in hiding. Can you tell your neighbor, neighbor? God is not interested in hiding. It's not hard to find him. And because of that, whatever they were looking for was a prophet. Even as a prophet, God did not want to send John as a prophet. God wanted to send John as a messenger because a messenger has only one thing. Deliver the message. Do you know why the Bible, thank you. Do you know why the Bible calls you ambassadors of Christ? You know, we take words in the Bible and we just begin to quote them. We think that God is going to, to make them happen because you're quoting scripture. The Bible calls you an ambassador. Do you know what it means for you to be an ambassador, sir? I checked the criteria of an ambassador. Number one, an ambassador has no will. Don't be in a hurry to quote scriptures. The first thing about an ambassador, the reason why God did not call you a member of parliament, because a member of parliament has an independent will apart from his president. <laughs> when he's given 100 million runs for bursary, a member of parliament has authority to eat 50. That's why they cheat. Because his will, as a member of parliament, he still has will to exercise his view. Do you understand? An ambassador is very different. Number one, an ambassador has no will. So it means his will is to do the will of the one that sent him. He has no will. Number two, an ambassador's security system is shipped from the country he came from. I came to check in my country, the embassy of America to Kenya. The people that are watching that embassy are all Americans. Inside the embassy, the security system was shipped. <laughs> the day you became born again, the conversation of I will not die is not a prayer point. The day you came into the corridor of God's will, God's hand automatically looks for you. As long as you're in God's path, remember God's hand will follow you. The reason why we are afraid is because we are not even sure if you are working for Jesus. It is foolishness for you to expect from a government you don't serve. Number three, an ambassador does not choose. It is chosen for him. Do you realize that even the, the office, do you know, I was shocked, sir. Uh, you have an American ambassador, uh, embassy in, in South Africa, right, sir? Do you know if you run as, a, as an American and you, oh my God, are, are we together? Do you know if you run as an American and you're in South Africa and you run and you enter an American embassy, the South African government cannot do anything about you? Are you aware that in that location, it is considered America? That's American ground. That's God's ability to rule. That's how God wants to rule the world. He's looking for men that can become embassies because his will can only flow in his embassy. It is on that embassy that now people will come and receive stamps because there is a gate to express his will. So the conversation stops being, Father, kill my enemy. Because once you're in this system, it is foolishness for you to fight such a man. The man will not even be aware you're fighting. By the time you try to touch him, the kind of rag that will strike you. Why? Because that man is no longer one. That man is serving a body. So God sees an interest. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, what is the need of God keeping you alive? No, ask your neighbor. I'm not your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. 
Yes. Why don't you like to ask your neighbor, neighbor, why should Jesus keep your life? Can I explain to you in a business term? In a business term, can I tell you this word? Forgive me, in a business term. You are God's investment. Yes. Don't think that God just keeps your life for, for, to look cute. God is not interested. Jesus is so cute. You are cuteness. All women put together, you have 0% of Jesus' cuteness. So God is not interested in cute men. God is interested in investment. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, do you understand you're an investment? You are God's investment. Do we have businessmen here? Any businessman? Any businesswoman, businessman? Lift your hand. Anyone? Can I ask you a question? What's the, what's, what powers your investment? Why do you invest in something? There's one thing I'm looking for. Profit. Another good word is return. Return. So, can I ask you a question? What makes you think Jesus keeps you alive for no return? You've not read the parable of five, two, and one? And how he gave? And at some point, Jesus returned. And the one that did not return anything, he says it was taken from him. Why? What, when God invested the Holy Ghost, what did you return to your master? Who changed because of you? What did your ministry do in Cape Town? Apart from the fact that you have cute cameras and four walls, the environment around you, did it bow? Did you subdue, subdue it to the master within you? The Christian today does not have understanding of kingdom. I had the man of God talk and I know he understands what he's saying. By the time he's saying the hand of God comes upon you. Look the people that hand, the hand of God came. There was a return to the investment. The hand of God is God's investment on man. And anytime God invests his hand, he must check for reward. What has come from that investment? So yes, your name is prophet. Do you know the kind of investment that the kind of return that that name requires. Your prophet, so and so, no, no problem. Do you, have you checked the prophets, the kind of caliber, the standard of the prophetic realm? Have you checked and found out in this name called prophet, what is the kind of return? Have you entered the realm where prophets return this kind of returns? You call yourself an apostle, do you know the apostolic rank? What it means? Apostles are establishers of doctrine. You don't even read the Bible. You take the Bible on a Sunday service for 10 minutes, take two scriptures. Do you know? And then you want to call yourself a prof apostle. You will be judged on that rank of apostle. And I hope you know Jesus is a king and he will not hold you any way lower. Because a king's word is law. And if you do not implement that word, Jesus will come and say, Oh, you say you are an apostle. So this is the rank of apostles. What did you do? What did you do with their pastoric? You say you are a pastor and every woman that comes to your church, you sleep with them? You know what it means to be a pastor? To pastor, that was the strength of David in case you're not aware. David was a king and David was second a pastor. Why? That's why you notice the things you will go through. The purpose of those things is to show you who you are going to become. Some of you are crying, God, my rent is being closed. You know why? Because when you really check, God is not after the rent. He is training you for something bigger. And especially people that are in real estate, you, are rent, you will have problems with rent. And then the problem is you will now get your own apartments. And then when you're about to knock because someone has delayed with one month, Jesus will come and tell you, ah, oh, you forget quickly. You forget what it feels to lock someone's house with children. You now forget. Oh, that thing will keep it. Mm, 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 mm. I, I remember, I remember Jesus. I said, keep quiet. Be humble. I came to realize every road I go through is because of the anointing upon my life. And your anointing will create your path. Your path. That's why all of us are not anointed the same. That means our journeys will not be the same. And based on the anointing is based on the sacrifice. Your anointing will demand a sacrifice. Your anointing. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you are, don't look for anointing. Father, anoint me. You will need to check for the price tag to keep that anointing. What is the price tag? When the Lord came to me 10 years ago and we began, the price tag was heavy. 
I began seeing leaders and everything. And in my nation now, last year when Apostle came, we hosted the deputy president. Many people saw a young boy enjoying the fact that government leaders are coming to him. Ten years ago, they didn't know how I fasted for ten years. They didn't know when you check the front, you see the suit. But if I can turn and you check the back, you will see the spears, you will see the armors, you will see the, mm, you will see the blood. You will see what really forms the backbone of what you are looking for. Sir. So before you ask God for visibility, do you know the structure that contains it? Before you tell God revival in, use me. Do you know what it means for God to use you? It means number one, you must be flawless. Yes, you must be flawless. It means everyone has been hurt by a pastor. So you will need to come and study how not to hurt my members. How not to hurt. And God will keep you in that class for five years. Yes, and you'll be coming to you and telling, Lord, I feel it's my time. The Lord will tell you, I am not aware. I'm not aware it's your time. The kind of anointing you sought, it will require 13 years of experience. Sit down. And you'll be in a hurry. And any time you try to come out and teach, Jesus will tell you, God will tell an angel, blind that man, blind him. Let no man see him until the set time. So ask your neighbor, neighbor, whatever you're asking for, did you check what it takes? Did you check it? Ask your neighbor, look at your neighbor. We are all pastors, we are all priests, according to Revelation. Did you check? Father, bring about revival in South Africa. Do you know what happened? Did you not read what happened in Antioch? You know the amount of sacrifice, what it takes men to bring a nation under the rule of God? You know the kind of alignment that it takes. The kind of debt. You are about to buy a nice suit and Jesus tells you no. And you'll be asking, Lord, why is that one prospering? He says, because of what I want to do with you is not what I want to do with him. So he can allow games. But you, where you are standing, are representing a nation. We cannot allow you to play games. Because the, the authority of the kingdom rests upon men. And if you do not understand what the kingdom is looking for with you, you'll be just talking and saying, I'm a Christian. And your territory does not look like your God. We boast that the world is, uh, South Africa is 70-80% Christian, right? Huh? Do you know that means 70-80% of South Africa should be godly? You boast your nation is 80% Christian. What happened to 80% of the land? It means your anointing was not territorial. The anointing upon Elijah was territorial. That's why king came to sort him and he spoke. So my question is, ask your neighbor, neighbor, what seekest thou? What are you looking for? What are you looking for, oh pastor? What are you really looking for? You want to marry? You know what it takes to keep one? I've been married for 10 years now. You know what it takes? After this preaching, he will not be, she will not be aware you are a pastor. And you will need to wear a cloth of a husband and a father and not preach to her at home. And in that house, you begin to tell her, I don't like how you talk to me. If you bring anointing there, you'll be wrong. You say, do you know who I am? You are not anyone. You are not anyone. You are her husband. That's why one of the things, because of the weight of authority on my head, I knew it from a young age. The first thing Jesus did, he gave me a wife to balance. So that anytime I want to, oh, you know who I am. You, can't, you are not anyone. You are my husband. Sit down. <laughs> Sit. You are not anyone. So I now use my wife as a, bar as a gauge to gauge truly whether I'm working with Jesus. And then I got to my 70 and I realized my wife began calling me daddy. It's not forceful submission. It is and submission. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, submission is and. It is not forced. Stop forcing people to call you daddy in the Lord, mommy in the Lord. If you are truly one, we will come and say, sir. Like the way I've come, I say, sir. He didn't tell me to call him. First, his age has allowed it. Number two, even if he's young, there has to be, oh, I'm a terrible student. Oh, my God. 
you need to know me. I'm terrible. By the time you come and say, I'm prophet, I will check you. I will check you are not a prophet. You're just a title carrier. In this conference now, God is going to give people real identity. Amen. Real identity. So that if you carry the prophetic, when you meet a liar, your prophetic spirit can be able to say, you are not a prophet, you are not. Why? Because you already are. And you are walking in the light of his word. Light. There is no darkness in you. Can I ask you a question? When God opens your hidden life, will it break you or make you? Leave alone what we put in there. When God really opens your hidden life, and puts it here. Imagine this is a screen. And he says, okay, now today, John C.W., we are watching your life. <laughs> Will you be saying, yes, Lord, watch my life? Because the hidden you is more greater than the visible you. What are you really looking for? Let's continue that scripture. I have very few minutes. Oh. Can you celebrate this man? He did well to create this conference. <laughs> celebrate, celebrate the man of God. Thank you, sir. Look there. He says, this is he who is written. Behold, I send my messenger. What God is looking to send now are messengers. People who will not try to be creative. I tell people everywhere I go, we are not called to be creative. We are called to be obedient. The, the work of Christianity is not a work of creativity. Stop trying to be creative. Stop helping God. Let God help you. Stop trying to sound deep. Be deep. Only men that read the word are deep men. Stop trying to sound deep. With a, a deep voice is not a deep man. Spend time with God. And I want to tell you, average preacher, great preacher, me included, I'm telling myself, study more. Read, pray more than you preach. Pray more. Your two hours here is dependent on your eight hours of prayer. Otherwise, we'll be just having cute services. Cute services. And Satan will be saying, mm, South Africa is dying and you're talking about service. When he came to me and told me that, oh, my heart crashed. He now told me, good. According to you, it will be six hours every day for six years. I say, hey. So I started, Kaka, go, go, me. Hey. One day I came and I told the Lord, Lord, I'm looking for what you want to give me. So guess the manual he gave me. And my wife is listening. She's in Kenya. She's online. She can comment. I have, I have witnesses. You know, sometimes we stand there and no one can witness it. You are lying. So I now told my wife, where we used to stay, it was used to be a, a balcony area. I went up and I fasted 21 days. No food, no water. I felt I was going to die, but the kind of thing I asked God for, I knew there was no way out. Such only comes out by prayer and fasting. That's the reason why the disciples are not able to do that miracle. Oh, there are miracles that are not dependent on belief. They are dependent on lifestyle. It's not, I believe this man who raised the dead. No, such, this kind, this kind, it will need a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. It means there are people you can go to and say, come out. And Satan will be saying, you don't have weight. You don't have weight. You are not heavy enough. You don't have what it takes to remove me. Such only comes out by prayer and fasting. Oh, in case you are not aware, Satan is in ranks. There is a rank that can accommodate your 20 minutes. Small demons. There is a place you get to. <laughs> Jesus must send you. And your title of Christianity does not mean anything to him. It is your title of alignment. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, how aligned are you to God's will? How aligned are you? Ask your neighbor, ask your neighbor. Could it be that you're asking God for what you're not willing to align to? Holy Ghost fire burn everywhere. Oh, fire. I wish you knew what we are singing. It's not a song. You will see fire in this land and no man shall stand against it. 
False prophets will die a natural death. God will begin to clean. You see, when my father in the Lord was standing here yesterday, I want to find out whether it's right to say this publicly. When he was standing preaching, teaching, he started praying. And then there's a person that came before and prayed. And the Lord told me, I'm going to do something. Check. When he finished praying, he now came. I saw a lightning strike the altar. I knew what it meant. It means God is going to divide. God is going to separate and destroy what is not his. And it will begin from the altar. From the altar. I might be too young to say the what I'm saying. But my spirit is too old to know what I know. And the cleanup will begin from the altar. The good thing about God before he brings cleanup, he wants men. Because he's a loving God. He wants men and begins to tell them, live a righteous life. Live a righteous holy life. We are going to be praying shortly. There is cleanup that is coming on the land of the south. Holy Ghost fire bang. The Lord has decided to impose his will by all costs, Jesus. For a long time, Africa has, has died in motivational talk. The fathers that God sent, you respected them not. The one that he didn't send are the ones that you powered. And you call them your men of God. Hey, men of God. And Jesus is not aware. He said, who is that person? And Satan thrives. How did this nation get here? How did you get to immorality displayed by young kids on the streets? How did you get here? How did you get to that point where Jesus was no longer on your corridors? Oh, South Africa, the Lord Christ for you. How did we boast of titles that our territories could not be able to hear their voice? How you have killed the ones that were sent from heaven. How you have built yourself in your own weight and refused the word of the Lord. I saw young girls displaying the spirit of immorality. I cried in my heart. How did we get here? Have you not read in your scriptures that a generation grew? The word is grow, not was. Little things power Satan at the end. How did you get to that place where the land forgot the God? Is it not your fathers of old? The Mandela's that fought for the freedom of the land? How did you become against slaves to Satan and his agenda? What God wants to do in this season, he wants to offer life and that life was the light of men. Order is coming back to your land, oh South Africa. And the only reason we are here is because we know that there are men, hidden men, who have a pure heart. And they are willing to go down with Jesus. It is Jesus or nothing. And after my 21 days of fasting, I remember it was on the 19th day. I felt I was dying. My wife came. My wife brought my mom. Put my mom on video and told my mom, if this man dies, I'm not responsible. He, my wife got data. She started saving data of my death so that she will not be implicated. You might ask yourself, how did you get there? We were tired of what was. We wanted new. So I now started crying. Oh, fire. <laughs> oh, fire. I was tired with what was happening in my land. And I told the Lord, Lord, I'm just a young boy, but I, if you can use me, I'm willing. I'm here. And he began promising me as a matatu driver. He began promising me the kind of things he will do with my life. Only if I can align. There is an only if. He began showing me great and mighty things. I was a dog feeder when he came. My job was to feed dogs. And he told me, if you can align, I will show you mighty things. There was no map. My father had passed on. 
There was no map. I knew that Jesus, I don't know where I'm going. But I remember in the days of my father Abraham, you say leave and go to the land I will, not I have. It means as I just keep going, there are things you will not know as you stand. You will only begin to see as you take a walk. And if you can align to the will of God, South Africa, you know not what the Lord wills to do with your land. For it is great and mighty in his eyes. My mom cried tears on the phone. He said, my son, this is not how to look for Jesus. I said, mama, you don't understand. The one you gave back to is not this one. I've become another man. And on the 21st day, I want to cut my long story short. So we pray. My wife is aware. I saw angels dancing on the cloud. Leave alone people that tell you I've seen. Me, I know if Jesus will stand here, I will say it. Because I know what I saw. And I called her to tell my wife, just in case I'm, I'm crazy, help me. When my wife came up, she looked up. The fear that came on her, I knew it was true. I was not a crazy man. And I saw a box being released. I won't say what was in the box. But it is what was in that box that makes me to stand today here. The Lord began showing me, whatever you are asking for, this is the kind of alignment that it requires. Are you willing? I said, God, I don't, I don't know. Just help me. I don't know if I'm willing. And the first thing he did, he took away friends. Took away opportunities. Cast me out in the dungeon. Stopped opportunities. Stopped money. Flow of money. Flow of favor. He took everything away. And he left me by myself. I was in ministry for a long time until one day I was preaching. A man came to me in the morning and he told me, are you looking for Jesus or ministry? That's the testimony. He has seen my testimonies on YouTube. I say, I'm looking for Jesus. That man told me this is not how you find him. At that particular time, I'm not preaching any bad thing, but I knew it was not the kingdom. That's when I knew you can be a preacher, but you're not preaching the kingdom. Jesus began his ministry by saying, the kingdom of God. If you don't have a kingdom view, my suggestion from today, go home and study kingdom. It's not good preaching that will save South Africa. Good sermons, cute phrases. What will save South Africa is the kingdom of God. For I tell you the truth, that kingdom has surely come upon him. God is jealous with South Africa. I tell you the truth, oh South Africa, God is jealous with your land. I asked the Lord yesterday when I was praying, why? I saw a white gate. I told you in the night. I told you the experience I saw. I saw a gate. Ah! And that gate came from heaven and the stairs came to Cape Town. I told you in the night. And I saw angels descending and ascending upon that gate, hailing, the time is at hand. Who will go for us? I saw it. Listen to me. Listen. Don't clap. I'm not interested. I'm telling you. Understand what I speak by the truth of God's word. I speak by the truth of his word. And I know what I say. I saw them coming down and up. And it was on the Cape Town. And I saw another high mountain. And that mountain sat and sat on it. And when I checked. I knew that Cape Town. It was not immorality. It was idolatry. Worship of idols, false gods. And the Lord says, behold, when I checked, I saw that regime fall. And I saw God again stand on the corridors of the south. And I saw a new breed. Guess what I saw today? I saw the land. And as he was talking, I saw green. And I know what it means. I saw young plants rising. It means Young Christians, if they all do not hearken to the voice of God, you'll be erased. And a new breed is at hand, a kingdom breed. A breed of men that will say, Jesus, we accept your rule. We will need to go back to kindergarten of the conversation and begin the whole lecture again. Don't allow your prophetic name to fool you. Be humble. Don't allow your title to fool you, your age to fool you. Be humble for what God is set out to do. It is new. Behold, I do a new thing. Shall you not see it? Shall you not see it? 
shall you not see? Shall you not see? Shall you not see it, my generation? I was shocked when you came and told me you know me. I asked him. I said, how does this man know me? How does this great man know me? I'm just a small boy. If you know where my church is, when Jesus now came and he told me, it's time to do ministry, the first thing he did, he removed the perspective of city. Because many young preachers, they want to look for city for proof of ministry. If you know where my ministry is, it's in the village. When we came and set it up, my wife told me, man of God, you see, this faith of you as a, hi, you need to know I'm not called. We now set up a ministry in the village. After finishing setting up, the Lord told me I will bring men to you. Hi. First service, we had two. Good Lord, me and my wife, we celebrated. And then the Sunday school was my children. One year later, a TV station came up, Spirit Television Limited. An auditorium was built, no loan, no nothing. Men came, and then the Lord told me to prove to you that I've given you. He brought the president, incoming president. And the Lord humbled me and he told me, if you walk with me, I will show you great and marvelous things. I just want to tell you, your anointing will demand a lifestyle. Are you willing to align? It is a good time for you to begin to tell God, Lord, whatever I'm asking you for, I'm sorry, I didn't know the weight. There is darkness in your land and only light can subdue it. My question is, have you yet become the light of the world? Or you're just quoting a scripture, I'm the light? Have you really become that light? Can I tell you, you are seeing is Satan's ground for expression. You are seen is Satan's ground. Satan has legal ground based on the door you open to him. He told the woman, go and sin no more. It means man can live a sinless life. Yes, that's what Jesus told the woman. Sin no more. Didn't Jesus know he was talking to a woman? That's flesh and blood and he's telling the person there is a grace I've given you. That grace opens a corridor where you cannot sin. There is a place where we cannot sin. It begins with us. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the work begins with you. You now want to tell the Lord, Lord, whatever you want to do in the sound, put authority on my life. And whatever it takes as proof of payment, give me the grace to pay. Oh, fire. Holy Ghost fire. Man. Everywhere. You will need to talk to God. I'm not him. You will need to talk to him. The Lord has been asking you for revival and I didn't know it's me. I'm the revival. I need to be revived. It's me. You, it begins with me. It begins with me needing you. Having no substitute apart from you. If this land is to change, you must first change. Stop saying that there is a problem. South Africa has a problem. You are the one that has a problem because you are the light of South Africa. And if you, the reason why you see South Africa looking like it is an expression of you. Your land is an expression of you. Because when Jesus stepped in Jerusalem, you could see the light. He says that they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Satan will only sit. Men will sit until light appears. It's not that men do not want to be delivered. Where is the light? Pastors, where is the light? Oh, fire. This is beyond your ministry. What God is fighting for is beyond your ministry. It's beyond the four walls. God is now in the nations. He says, ask me of the nations. Not ministries. Do you have a national view of what you want Jesus to do? How will the nation be affected by the oil you carry? Lord, I'm just a young boy. I'm just a young man. I don't have money. That's not what Jesus is looking for. Jesus is looking for a yielded heart. 
what he's about to do with your life. It will shock you. Holy Ghost fire burn. I see. I see candles on people's heads. But they were dead. And then I saw an angel move from the east to the west of the land. And I saw he was touching the candles again. Touching the candles again. It's going to be resting on people's heads tonight. As I'm talking now, it's going to be resting on people and it will continue till the night. Every person here with a genuine interest that God will fill you, begin to pray that prayer. Fill me, Lord. You're going to see the light. It's going to, oh, it's going to spark. Mongros Kabila Su Saiko Bala Degemenans Escotale Banaperaskia Kubenafia Tola Skepe Balaga to a menko praskotebila isko dembela fidiapa. As I'm talking now, their tongues are to be open. For Bilaya Sembe Escobrakatua Esiba Lagi Vele Baria Menko Aiskobe Balivede Tolia Praskotabaya Esebenu Zia Kabala Gebrescotaba Ebedombina Fadaya Braka Edebede Embedua Zia Bandu Iakada Braskotebi Esebe Lagia Menko Tali Progobena Segebe de Gede Ebrekatua Bea Sebena It's a good time to pray Sia bandu ekto parakas kopeli fe de baraka bia tua sia gaya menele prakas kote bele via pompa. It will be resting here, Father. Wherever those torches are, light them, Lord, for the sake of the south. Sia mogon peli dai kumpa iskota breka. Holy Ghost fire burn. Light them, light them. I see an angel lighting the torches. Oh, fire. Holy Ghost fire burn. Everywhere. Oh. Pray the prayer if your heart is genuine, Lord. Light me, light me, light me. Light me, give me back what matters. Give me something beyond a name. Give me a message. I might be 20, but give me a message. I might be 80. I might be 70. Give me a message. Rewrite your message again in my heart. Oh, fire. Holy God, fire burn. Everywhere. Oh, oh fire. Holy God, fire burn. Give me a message. For my generation, cry now. If you know how to pray, it is a good time to pray. No one will pray for you. Pray. Give me a message for the south. Give me a message for the land. What we are seeking for is a messenger. We are not looking for any prophetic. We are not looking for. We are looking for messengers who will go for God. Ia bede bea, skate braka topi fadagia, embe po di via kai, sego de braka topi a fire, abe bo, abembo, ia gandem brescota, eskata braka to, eke beda vina ya supela, supela prokos kopela vibria kong. Holy Ghost fire, man. If your heart is genuine, the Lord wants to give you a message. Will you be a committed messenger? Will you be a committed messenger? Can the Lord trust you with the South? He wants to give new fresh oil. Can he trust you to go for him? Will you prostitute his hand again? Like those that went ahead of you? A clean up coming. Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run. 
over. I wanna run over. It's beyond the song. Fill me up till I overflow. Whatever God wants to do, men must be aligned. Men are needed if the south is to be aligned. Are you the one or should we wait for another? Oh, South Africa, behold, the season is at hand. For revival begins with you. Before your land looks at it, your heart must be the first recipient. Till I ever flow. You need to be genuine with your prayer. Escapa pataka, epepopa, ekidaba, siabela bena, salamantali, crope pato copra catuas capilla viberiacu. Till I ever flow. It's not a song. God needs to fill the first land, which is your heart. It will be a story until alignment is the product of the day. It will be a story until alignment is a product of the day. Are you willing to align for the sake of your land? Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. Why do you want the anointing? Is it for Jesus or for you to look big? Remember when he anointed you? Do you remember the promise you made that you will go for him? He gave you the finances. Do you remember how you told him that you will stand with his word? He gave you a family, and that was the starting of your death of prayer life. He gave you a business and now you can no longer spend time with him. I want to run over till my Jesus is seen. I want to run over. Over. Till my nation is changed, I want to run over. Till South Africa is won, I want to run over. See a pie! It could be no fear at all. Scrappy baraka to a goose. I see the heavens open. And I see a gate upon the town of the Cape. I see a prevailing generation. I see the days of revival. I see the kingdom of God. I see it. I want to run over It's beyond your family, my generation It's beyond you A generation needs to be one Oh, South Africa Open your eyes and see the glory of God It's beyond the car you're looking for It's beyond the house you're looking for it's for generations. For generations. Katepe, ekta pato kopi na fidia kan. Sia pata gavia fai. For generations. Fill me for generations. Use me for generations. And whatever the price, we are willing to pay. We are 
are willing to pay. We are willing to pay for generations. I am willing to lay down my life for generations. Sika beladi amena fisku pora eka bena si amogonteli poko rafis esizia sakino mantali broko pena vida lia chuja dai kombe skapeda fiata kebela ai kombe na via pelege bens dobi na fasko dobola eki no parasku ate iabea si akaba na via fiata ka.